Have you ever tried to learn programming and just found yourself failing miserably? You start out enthusiastic, enroll into an online course that promises to teach you everything you need to know about programming. And once you're done, you somehow feel even more lost than you did when you just started out. And this fills you with anxiety, dread, and low self-esteem. Because how come everyone else seems to find this so easy? Like this guy landed job offers at Facebook, Microsoft, and Google, and you're struggling to run a single program without going online and looking up YouTube tutorials? If you feel like this, just know that you're not alone. This was my situation too, just five years ago. And in this video, I'm going to give you the steps that I took to learn programming and land a job in the field. More importantly, these were the steps that I took to overcome my overwhelming fear of programming. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a story about this guy I used to go to school with. And for the purposes of this video, let's call him Dylan. Dylan was the smartest kid that I had ever met. And I'm not talking about the kind of kid who studies all day and gets good grades because of that. No. Dylan was effortlessly smart. He just had to hear about a concept or read about it once and he was able to internalize it. He made getting straight A's look so easy, while the rest of us would spend hours staying up all night studying for exams and still couldn't even come close to the grades that he was getting. If you're watching this video, at some point, chances are that you've had a Dylan in your life as well. This is the kid that all the teachers love and your parents, well, they wished you were more like him. Anyways, after graduating high school, Dylan went on to get a scholarship to one of the most prestigious universities in the UK. And a couple of years ago, when I spoke to him, he told me that he was planning on learning programming and wanted to get a job in software engineering. When I followed up with him just two months after that, however, Dylan told me that his plans had changed. He no longer wanted to become a software engineer because programming was just, quote, not for him. Dylan, the smartest kid in class, the genius, found it too difficult to learn programming and decided to give up on his goal of becoming a software engineer. While the average students, like myself and some other students in my class, ended up learning programming and landing jobs in tech in fields like data science, software engineering, and computer science. So how come we did it and Dylan couldn't? Clearly, this wasn't about skills, intelligence, or talent because Dylan had far more of any of these things than we did. No, what distinguished us from Dylan were our mindsets, the way in which we approach success and failure. And I will tell you all about it in this video. Okay, let's get into it. In 2012, Stanford psychologist Carol Dweck coined the term growth mindset. According to Dweck, there are two types of mindsets, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. When faced with a problem that's a bit too difficult for you, what's your initial reaction like? Do you feel like this is just too hard and you're never going to be able to solve it? Do you get anxious? Or do you feel like you just haven't solved it yet? Like you'll get there eventually with a little bit more time and practice. If you fall into the first category, then you have what Dweck describes as the fixed mindset. A person with the fixed mindset believes that traits like talent and intelligence are inherent that you're either born with it or you're not. Let's go back to Dylan's story. This was the fast learner, the kid who barely made mistakes. He got good grades without even trying, and he was constantly being complimented about having good brains and about being so much smarter than everybody else. So what do you think happened when for the first time in his life, this guy tried to learn programming and struggled with it? When he went online and realized that strangers on the internet were capable of writing complex code that he couldn't even understand. When he tried running the most basic program and faced errors. I'll tell you what happened. Dylan went into fight or flight mode. He got frustrated and decided that programming just wasn't for him. You see, Dylan embodies the fixed mindset. He thrives in environments that validate him and breaks down at the mere prospect of failure. And for the longest time, I was like this too. In fact, when I first started learning programming, I always thought that there were two types of people in this world. People who were cut out for programming and people who were not. Turns out, I was right. The people who are cut out for programming, however, aren't the smartest or the most talented. 
they just have the ability to accept that learning to code is something that's difficult. It requires patience and a lot of effort. It isn't something that can be mastered overnight. The most prominent trait of a good programmer is the growth mindset. The growth mindset is the opposite of the fixed mindset. It is the ability to acknowledge that you just aren't any good at it yet. Of course, every line of code that you write right now is going to be bad. You're just getting started. And all these people that you see online writing complex code, they're better than you because they have put in so much more time than you doing this. There are people who have dedicated their entire lives to this field and you think that by taking one online course that you're going to become an expert overnight? Instead of thinking about how awful you are at programming and how much better everybody else is, just stop comparing yourself to other people. I used to do this a lot when I first started learning to code. I first started learning programming when I was pursuing a computer science undergraduate degree in university. And I came into this degree with little idea of what to expect. I had no prior programming experience and I was in a class filled with students who had like over a decade of programming experience. These people had been coding since they were kids. So naturally, every project, every assignment that they came up with was so much better than anything I could even imagine building. Over time, this led to frustration. I felt like I wasn't improving. I was putting in the hours, staying up all night, practicing and studying, and I still felt like I couldn't match up to these other students in my class. And in a fit of frustration and anxiety, I went to my programming professor with the hopes that she'd have some words of encouragement for me. And when I went up to her, this woman looks me dead in the eye and goes, well, I guess some people just aren't cut out for programming. By some people, she meant me, obviously. And I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it wasn't this. And the moment she said that, I felt my heart sink. I felt as though I'd made the biggest mistake of my life by trying to pursue a degree in computer science. And I just felt like this field wasn't for me. And for an entire year after that, I gave up on trying to learn to code. And then around one year or one and a half years after that, I started speaking to some senior programmers in my field. These were people who were really good at what they were doing and I looked up to them. While speaking to them, I realized that many of these people had faced the exact same experiences as I did when they first started learning programming. So they had felt the same feelings of imposter syndrome, anxiety and self-doubt and they just kept going even when they felt like giving up. And eventually, as they trusted the process and kept putting in the hours, they just became better at it. And that's when I realized that I had wasted all this time. I had gotten so caught up in this web of self-doubt and I had trusted the opinions of one other person, someone who didn't know anything about me or my capabilities. But I listened to them and I hadn't even given myself a chance. So in my third year of university, or maybe it was my second year, I'm not so sure now, but one of those years, after having wasted all of this time, I decided that I was going to start learning programming from scratch again. This time, I went on programming challenge websites like LeetCode and HackerRank, and I tried solving some of the practice questions on these sites. And initially, I was really bad at it. I used to spend three to four hours on the questions labeled easy, and I knew that there were other people who were solving these questions in just minutes, and it was taking me a lot longer than usual to solve them. But at one point, you've just got to leave your ego out the door, stop focusing on the outcome, and just focus on the process, and eventually you will become better at it. For many of us, learning a code is more of an internal struggle than it is an external one. In a way, this is true for succeeding in almost every industry. You've just got to embrace the fact that there is a learning curve, especially when you're trying to do something as difficult as programming. And even if you don't see any visible signs of progress, just keep going and you will inevitably become better at it. If you're serious about wanting to learn programming, then my second piece of advice is that you turn this into a daily habit. 
A mindset change is great and it's wonderful that you believe in yourself. But a mindset change alone isn't going to do anything if you don't actually put in the hours. So just practice a lot. And I know that I've said the word practice so many times in this video, but that's just because it is so important and I cannot overemphasize the amount of practice that you need in order to become good at programming. I used to spend around five hours every single day learning to code. And one thing that helped me turn programming into a habit was establishing a daily routine. So every single day, I would pack my bag, get my laptop, drive down to this cafe near my house, order a cup of coffee and start coding for at least five hours. And this habit became such an integral part of my daily routine that I wouldn't even skip it on the weekends. And every time I went to a cafe or even saw another person drinking coffee, my brain would associate that action with programming. There's a piece of advice from James Clear's best-selling book, Atomic Habits, that helped me turn programming into a part of my daily routine. So according to James Clear, there's a reason that people don't achieve their goals. Now, people are not stupid. They don't create goals with the intention of not achieving them, right? Every goal you've created, you've created because you thought that at some point you will achieve it. The problem is people run out of motivation. Maybe you're motivated when you create a goal, like after you watch an inspiring TED talk or when you make a New Year's resolution. But when things get difficult or when you're not seeing any visible signs of progress, you'll eventually run out of motivation. According to James Clear, there's something that can help you continue working towards your goals even when you run out of motivation. And that's called an implementation intention. An implementation intention lets you specify what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and where you're going to do it. For example, instead of saying, I'm going to learn programming, you can say, I'm going to learn programming every day between 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the cafe near my house. Of course, this implementation intention is specific to me, but you can create something that works for you and according to your schedule. This way, when you do run out of motivation, and notice that I'm saying when and not if because you will inevitably run out of motivation at some point in your programming journey. And when this happens, the implementation intention will ensure that you stick to programming every day and that you're turning it into a daily habit regardless of how you feel. Okay, so I do have a lot more advice, but if I were to continue talking, this video is going to end up being 10 hours long, so it's best I end it here. But to summarize, programming isn't an easy undertaking. You need to develop good habits and have the right mindset. And initially, yes, you won't be very good at it, but as time passes, you'll get the hang of it. It's just like swimming or riding a bike. Yeah, maybe you'll fall down or even drown a couple of times, but eventually you'll get back up and you'll improve. That's all for this video. And this isn't the kind of video I usually make, but I've been thinking about it lately and I feel like a lot of this advice would have really helped me when I was just starting out. And if you're anything like I was five years ago and you feel like quitting on your programming journey, you feel lost or like you just aren't progressing, I hope this video offers some perspective and I hope it helps you. That's all. Um, do like this video if you enjoyed it and do subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. I will also be posting more tips and tutorials on data science, AI and programming in the next few weeks. So subscribe if you want to watch more of this.